On number 17, it says, what is the frequency of the waveform shown in problem 6.15? What you do there is you look at the period of the waveform, and you find out that 1 over the period is equal to the frequency. So 1 over 12 milliseconds is about 83.3 hertz. To find the phase difference between those two waveforms, you look at the difference in their horizontal distance for their peak. You call that lowercase Greek letter delta. You find the period, uh, which we call, I guess we can say it's also, on the, at least on a paper, wavelength, and you find that in time, so it's kind of odd. But the way that we did it in the lab was you take the sm lo small delta over the big, la over the uh, long wavelength, that's the period, times 360 degrees, and that gives you 60 degrees, 2 milliseconds over 12 milliseconds times 360 gives you that. In the diagram, you see that Vn leads V out, this one is ahead of that one, by 60 degrees. In number 19, it's asking for the magnitude of the transfer function between these two. And you see there's going to be the 3 volts over the 2 because the transfer function is V out over V in, just talking about magnitude. Notice the keyword in the problem for 19 is magnitude. Then looking at it in polar form, they not only want the magnitude, but they also want direction as well. So you put these two answers above together to find out that the transfer function is a unitless 1.5 at an angle of 60 degrees. That will tell you how um, the output depends upon the input. There's a change in magnitude from the in to the out, but also a change in phase, and that's represented by the transfer function. That's why it's called the transfer function. It shows you what you get out based on what you put in. And then to convert that over to complex forming, problem 21, you take the magnitude times the cosine of 60 to get the real part, plus j, which is the square root of minus 1, uh, times the magnitude times the sine of 60 to get the imaginary part of this complex expression for the transfer function.